I'm David Levin, and welcome to Pop Goes the Culture, the untold stories of your favorite TV shows from the stars who lived them. Today, part four of my eight-part conversation with Anson Williams, best known as Posse on Happy Days. In this episode, Anson talks about celebrity set visits to the Happy Days set. Wait till you hear who dropped in. Visits by the Beatles, Rolling Stones, Hollywood royalty, and Anson goes to the White House. Also, we'll talk about why Happy Days switched from a one-camera movie style to three cameras in front of a studio audience and how that impacted the show. Here's Anson. And then from there I did the drug knot with the real David Toma and then I started getting hired for the and then since that time I've done over 200 hours of television. Uh, opportunity of directing everything from L.A. Law to Profiler to Lizzie McGuire to Star Trek to Sequest to Hercules to Xena to Clueless to Sabrina to, uh, oh my gosh, you know, all these wonderful shows. And now something new's come up for me, which is a little bit, which, which is a little odd. Gary would say, you know, look for opportunity. Well, for years, I'm on these sets, and, and I've always been a crew person. The, the department heads, you know, wardrobe, makeup, you know, props, they're ingenious people, smart people with all these clever inventions they create for their departments. <clears throat> and one day it dawned on me, my God, here's these one-of-a-kind products that are so amazing that are the real Hollywood products. I mean, these are the working products. All these people out there are trying to pretend and, and con people into, you know, buy this, buy that. I'm thinking, what, if, what would Gary do? Well, get these products out to the people. These are, this is amazing. Create a company. Take advantage. Find opportunity. This is your script. Direct it. So I created a company called Star Maker Products, and uh, now we're, um, you know, our, we have these the most the best products the entertainment business has to offer, one of a kind, straight out of the, straight out of Hollywood. Now we're, we're going to be in, I can't say the names. We're going to be in like, we're all over like the biggest home shopping, you know, television shows on TV and the biggest retailer in the world and so on and so it's become like a huge success star maker products and all because of gary marshall all of the same tools of look for opportunity you know keep your ego in check do the job you know and 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 and, and from that you will reap the rewards does gary get the family discount he free gary gets <laughs> and gary free but doesn't want anything mm -hmm. Let's talk about some of the people you met while doing Happy Days. You tell me about some of the great oh. set visits. Happy Days gave me the opportunity uh, to meet some of the most just amazing people in the world. I never would have had that, you know, that kind of entree. One great story was during the first year of Happy Days. We were it wasn't three camera yet. We weren't filming in front of a live audience. We were in some stage way in the back of Paramount, just shooting cold and you know typical day and I go over to grab a cup of coffee and I see this man and his son all by himself I come back I said you know guys what this grip electrician someone by the coffee machine there looks just like John Lennon it was John Lennon nobody told us he was coming on this set nobody John Lennon and his son Julian Julian was 10 at the time and John Lennon proceeded to spend the entire day till we wrapped with us. The nicest, most congenial, humblest, um, shyest man. And there he is doing doodles for the crew. And, and do we ask? Oh, no, we're professionals. Why would we ask for a doodle? Why would we ask? No, we didn't even ask for an autograph. Just took a picture together. There's a lot of rich grips now with their doodles. But not us. Another time, we're on the set, Ringo Starr, Keith Moon come walking in because they're shooting Sextet 50 feet away from us on another stage. And who do I meet there? Mae West. So there's Ringo Starr, Keith Moon, Mae West within 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, you know, I, 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 honestly, what I say about Happy Days, it's, 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 it's given me the opportunity to spend time at the White House, in the family quarters, to Watts. Which, uh, which White House were you in? Uh, Ford, White, Ford White House. But no, this is off camera. I'll tell you about that. Oh, I can't wait to hear it. <laughs> but yeah, but I'm just saying, so it gave, um, you know, 
just a lot of, it's just on and on and on, the, the, the amazing, you know, people and individuals and wow. It is amazing. What, um, when you were doing the show, how did the show change when you went from being uh, one camera movie style to in front of an audience? When we switch, when Gary Marshall switched the show to a three camera live audience, believe it or not, Happy Days didn't become the huge, huge hit. It did become until the third season, actually second and a half season. Um, we were a hit and we started going down. We we're still hit with kids, but not with, not with there wasn't that cl cl collaboration around the television yet. It wasn't until they moved Henry up front and had that big talk with us you know, change the format a little bit, put in front of an, a, an audience. Well, we all just came alive with the audience. I mean, it just sh was a shot of adrenaline. It put that X factor into the entire production. At that point, we became number one in the world for years at that point. So putting it in front of that live audience was really the rebirth of the show. And um, thank goodness. Yeah. Yeah. How, how was it for you working in front of an audience? Were you nervous? Was it, uh, I mean? Every week I was nervous, which, a good nervous though. It's like every week was Broadway. Every week there was this, there was this tradition of theater, of opening night. It was so great. You go there, you do the run through, then you have your dinner, you have some quiet time, you come in, and, you, you, and, you, and, the, and they're, they're doing the, the warm up, and then the music's going, and then they introduce you, and we're going to do, and the, I mean, it was a whole thing. It was just, and then after, after you go out to a late dinner afterwards, it was just a wonderful, it was just a wonderful, you know, just, just a wonderful high every week to have the opportunity to be live. You never got cocky, you're never that sure. So it was, it, I think it made you better and the show better. Next time Anson Williams talks about meeting cool 50s icons, watching Bill Haley in the Comets re-record Rock Around the Clock for the Happy Days theme, Anson's music career singing to a bulldog, plus stepping in for a Rat Packer in Vegas and the unexpected encounter Anson never could have planned for, and why Anson Williams decided not to continue his Vegas singing career. Till then, what's your favorite 50s music? Let me know in the comments and I will see you next time.